Welcome to the Blockchain Hustle, where I take a look at some interesting plays of how blockchain technology is opening up new business vistas across multiple industries. How does one remove corruption in public administration? Corruption is strongly associated with opaque, hidden transactions, distorting of data, documents or records. And blockchain provides transparency and immutability. Corruption is also associated with a kind of centralization and the misuse of power. A strong link is observed between the number of intermediaries and corruption. So I think it should follow that reduce the number of intermediaries and the corruption should go down, right? And blockchain is all about decentralization. So can blockchain help curb corruption and instill trust in public services? Possibly so. After all, as mentioned by the lead vocalist of the rock band U2 and a businessman and philanthropist Bono in his uh, 213 TED talk, the biggest disease is corruption. The vaccine is transparency. Hi everyone, this is your host Meenu Sareen with this 11th episode of the Blockchain in Public Sector series. A friend asked me if and how blockchain can address corruption. She said that process efficiencies in the new applications, both across businesses and public sector, are great. But with corruption, most of this, whether blockchain or not, they would remain undermined. So let's go down the rabbit hole and try to figure this out. Now, blockchain has got two main features that makes it a pretty potential anti-corruption instrument. The first feature is that of the integrity of the records it manages. This eliminates the tampering and the falsification of the data. Thus, putting your records, putting the data on a blockchain guarantees the record's authenticity. Plus, it also eliminates a single point of failure. The second one is that blockchain injects full tra traceability into every transaction. And thus, it kind of gives an immutable trail of transactions, which in turn helps in identifying the fraud elements. Now, having said that, let's start with some corruption subjects, things which are prone to corruption. And some of them are government procurements, elections, financial reporting and accountability, the records management along with its data integrity, the registration of assets, tracking of transactions, identity management, and there could be a few more. Let's delve a bit into a few of these. I begin with the registering assets. Now, when I talk about the registering of the assets, this includes the valuation of the asset, the registering of the asset, as well as the chain of custody for that asset. Now, corruption is, in this space, corruption is predominantly in the property registry and the land titling. Putting the assets on a blockchain, like the land title registry, as was done in Sweden and Georgia, it helps towards a disintermediation and it prevents fraud, red tape and eventually corruption. As far as the land title registry program of Georgia is concerned, I had shared that in an earlier episode, the fourth one in the series, if you want to go back and check. Now, blockchain is also used to create tamper proof company registries. Thus, it helps to determine the true owners and in, by doing so, it uh, prevents money laundering. So for example, here, uh, the example here is of uh, in Delaware, the corporations are allowed to use blockchain for the registration and the transfer of the stock ownerships. The second one that I have here is on the tracking of the transactions. What we need to do is to automate and track high risk transactions. And when I speak about high risk transactions, what are these? These are usually public contracts, cash transfers, and fund or aid disbursements. The government payout systems, the government payment systems, and the cash transfers, with their multiple points of human discretion, they make them very vulnerable to fraud and falsification. And thus, they create opportunities for bribery. Committing these transactions on a blockchain, it gives one traceability, and also an end-to-end -end transparency. 
And uh, when you have it on a blockchain, the critical information from every step of the transaction, that gets locked in. Plus, you also have these smart contracts. So the smart contracts with their automatic or the self-execution, whenever the program conditions are met, they reduce any process tampering, discretionary misuse, as well as a kind of a stalling of the legit funds transfer. So if some funds are to be transferred, uh, you do not have to rely on the person behind the desk who says that, yes, I will disperse these funds to you, but you need to grease my palms for that. So it kind of uh, eliminates such kind of a bribery. And uh, for the aid flow, uh, just recall the example of the blockchain powered smart voucher systems that I had shared. Uh, this was the one in Groningen, Netherlands, and I'd shared some specifics on this in the fifth episode of the series. Yeah, you'll need to go back and listen to that episode again for this. Another one is on the identity management. This is about proving your identity in a digital world. And uh, this includes identity verification as well as combating identity theft. Remember that uh, Sandra Bullock's movie, The Net, where her character finds her identity stolen and she's on the run? Well, what we need is a secure and national, if not universal, a secure and national legal identity available on a blockchain. And this would go a long way to help fight money laundering and frauds. Plus, additionally, it gives a leg up to the financial inclusion of target set of citizens that is enhanced targeting of public funds. And I have a little bit more on that a bit later. The next one I have here is on the elections. That's the next corruption subject. Now, blockchain facilitates an end-to-end -end transparency to the voting process. Plus, it also helps towards the protecting the anonymity of the voters. Now, while we do have globally a few examples of the governments who have embarked on getting this blockchain-based voting into action, uh, trying to figure it out how it goes about, whether it's feasible, whether it is scalable and stuff like that. What I'd like to share here is on a certain platform from Seoul, Korea. This is a citizen participation platform and it is called Democracy Seoul. The blockchain provider here is a local startup called IconLoop. Blockchain's adoption into Democracy Seoul is a part of Seoul Metropolitan Government's Blockchain City Seoul pro uh, project. And this project was announced in 2018 and it aims to implement blockchain into 14 administrative tasks by 2022. Now, while the platform will use blockchain to record voting in real time, I wanted to speak about another system which is to be used as a precursive application to voting, and that is online petitioning. Now, this system, which is an interesting one, the system will enable the city residents to share their views with the local government. A resident raises, uh, it works like this, that a resident raises an issue on the platform. And if that issue gets a minimum of a thousand votes from the other residents, the city's mayor will have to address it. And if it receives 200,000 votes or more, the national government has to address it. Now, the existing system, it saw some issues of fake identities and a lot of vote manipulation. So the authorities plan to replace this existing system with a blockchain-based one. And by doing so, they aim to eliminate issues like the authenticity, duplicate voting. Uh, plus, of course, with this, they would like to inject some transparency and trust in the system. And while on Seoul, one of its districts has also implemented a blockchain-based proposal evaluation system, a part of the public service bidding. And the aim here is to enhance transparency and the trust in assessing the responses to the public tenders. Now, speaking about public tenders, this brings me to a big corruption subject, which is government procurements. But let's talk about it in the next episode. So till then, stay safe and tune in next week for more on this one. Thank you. You've been listening to the Blockchain Hustle. Did you enjoy this podcast? If so, please do leave a short review. Like it, share it, download it, subscribe to it. 
What should I talk about next? Please do let me know your suggestions by writing to me at minu at vlsiconsultancy.com or through any of the other contact channels as shared in the episode notes. Thank you.